about to watch, please subscribe to our videos on YouTube and like this video if you find it useful. This is a review of the Apple Watch. Uh, this is the Apple Watch in steel with a steel bracelet, and I have some other accessories for it. Um, this is a, essentially a day one review. This is not a long-term review after having had the Apple Watch for a long time. This is a first day, I've unboxed it, I've set it up, I've worn it, I've had some initial impressions um, of the item. Um, as you probably know, I've been covering um, the Apple Watch since it was launched. I've seen it at various phases um, through the, the launch cycle the, uh, the, with the demo software and, now, and then later with some of the live software. Um, seen the various versions of the watch, the Apple Watch Sport, the Apple Watch, and the Apple Watch Edition. So I'm pretty familiar with the entire collection, but the software experience on all of them is the same. So first of all, I'm just going to talk about like what you sort of get out of the box. Now there's slightly different boxes for each, but this is the this is the box for the uh, the Apple Watch. Okay, and it looks surprisingly like a box for a traditional watch that is not by accident at all. You see here some details on the side, but what it is, of course, it's clean, just like a lot of other Apple um, products. Uh, it's so clean the camera can't even focus on it. Um, and then you see the Apple Watch logo on the top there. It's interesting that they went this direction with the case because it's actually bigger than it needs to be. And over the last couple of years, um, what you've seen is Apple box is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Of course, it's, they're, they're trying to be environmentally friendly so that they don't, uh, you know, wa have waste. Um, you know, the iPhone, for example, which is bigger than the Apple Watch, comes in a much um, smaller box. So this is interesting right here. You have, um, it looks like it's some paperwork. It's actually a cleaning cloth behind this little plastic sheet right here. You have a, a microfiber cleaning cloth. And then you have um, a different item actually on the back. And I actually had to guess what this was. I was like, what is this little, this, it's like a little pouch. What is this little pouch right here? Well, what this pouch is for, it's a, it's a, it's a soft cloth pouch. It's for the excess links of the bracelet so that you have a place to put them so they don't get scratched. So you put the links in here, you would uh, you connect them all together, you put them in here, and you would have an opportunity to store them for a long time um, if you want to resize it, um, if you want to, you know, it, it, again, you're probably never going to use these links. I know that because with traditional watches, um, I'll size a bracelet one time and I'll keep the links um, if I want to resell it or something like that or I want to give it away, but I don't, tend to normally use them so it's nice that the apple gives you a, a special place to put it so it doesn't get scratched i like that just nice little touch things that i have i, I wouldn't have expected um and it was cool so i'm just going to put it back right there in this little place and then you have you know little details in here the actual container for the the watch is this plastic thing underneath here i've already taken it out you would see the um you know the plug and then there's the charging cable which um, I have elsewhere. I will I'll bring that in a moment. But here is here is the, the case. Now this is very similar to the version for the Apple Watch Edition. The Apple Watch Edition, a little bit more premium. It's like a blue. It's kind of like a felt exterior. And the Apple and the Apple Watch Edition has um, a type of case where you can go ahead and charge um, actually. So there's a little port in the back, and you can you can charge the Apple Watch as it's sitting in there. This one um, does not allow for that, but it comes in here. Um, it goes, it, of course, it would go on this little ring and it would sit there and it would be all nice and attractive just waiting there for you. And this is also a good place to store the watch. And again, this is a nice, durable plastic container. Um, it, it's, it's made of a material that's sort of meant to, to, of course, last. It's not a disposable thing. And so that's something that you're going to want to keep. And that's interesting because most Apple products don't come with that. You don't get cases or anything like that. Um, you just sort of get the, the, you know, the, the minimum that you need. So that's an interesting element. Um, this is the charging cable. I haven't um, sort of unraveled it yet. And the, th the first thing that I noticed about the charging cable is how long it is. Usually when you have a, a, a charging cable for a, an iPhone, for example, I think it's six feet long, maybe three feet long. This is definitely longer. I haven't measured this one. I don't know what it is, but it's a lot longer. And I'm wondering why. Why the Apple Watch? What's the notion be, behind having um, something longer? Is it because you might not have a, a convenient place or because it needs to possibly be in uh, like a special, like you want to keep it in a tray or something like that. But it's nice that it's a long cable. I'm sure there's a reason that's super obvious that maybe I'm not thinking about, um, but there it is. There's still some plastic on here as well. And what this does essentially is it just magnetically bonds to the back there. 
So you can see it's, it's magnetically attached, sticks pretty well. Um, and, and, the, and pretty much the second it gets in there, it says it, it, it chimes, which is nice, and then it starts to, to charge. And actually it charges pretty quickly. Speaking of charge, let me, let me talk about battery life. I'm gonna sort of go to the screen here that has battery life. Let's find where it is here. No, is that, there we go. Okay, so that's 71%, and you can, you can push a, a power reserve mode, which I think just sort of disconnects the radios and things like that. Um, and that will, oh, okay, I got mail. So that was one of the notifications there. And you can, you can adjust a lot, so there's a lot of, of customization, but I wanna talk about battery life. Um, you're gonna need to charge this every day, maybe twice a day. I don't think you're gonna ever need to charge it more, more than twice a day, um, even, even if you're using it a lot. Look, let's face it, smart watches do not have the world's best battery life. That's unavoidable. It's always gonna be a trade-off between functionality and battery life, meaning those those smartwatches out there that offer like a ton of of, of battery life, they can last for days if not weeks uh, of battery life. Those don't do anything. <laughs> they have simple screens. They just have basic notifications. They don't really work that well. And if they do work that well, they do very few things well. Um, the Apple Watch does a ton of things, and the idea is for it to do all of these things pretty well. So you're going to have abysmal battery life. Now abysmal, I say that in sort of the, the scope of, the, of what consumers want when they're used to timepieces, where the, the standard quartz watch, for example, has a battery which lasts on average for two years, and some of them last for 10 years. So compared to those types of things, yes, charging it every day is a hassle. But again, you're only charging it as much as your phone, which is on a daily basis, and the technology will improve, and Apple is not holding back. So the question is, is the battery life a deal breaker? I would say no, but the Apple Watch is yet to be the type of item that you can wear all the time, traveling anywhere you want to go. You still have to live within sort of an urban structured lifestyle, meaning you have to be in a place where you're going to be near chargers. Places where mobile phones can go and you can rely on them to stay alive, the Apple Watch can go. But if you're going to a place where you're going to be out in the wilderness, you don't know if you're going to be near a charger for more than 12 hours or something like that, or, or, or 24 hours, chances are the, the, the watch might die. But what you can do is keep it alive for several days by um, putting in, I call basically time only mode. You basically disconnect it from your phone, which disconnects um, the Bluetooth, and then you have an opportunity to, to have it last longer. There's actually, um, I'm gonna go to the, the app for a second. I know I'm jumping around all over here, but it's, it's kind of, you know, there's a lot of things to talk about. So, whoop, that was already open. So this is this is actually the app store um, for the for the for the watch, and that's part of the app. That's how you get to the app store. It's through the app. Um, here's where you go to change notifications and things like that. There was, and you can see here, there's a lot of options. There's actually a lot of things you can do, which is great. Um, let's go into general. I'm looking for here. We go usage. Um, so it's actually, so you can see here the total amount of, of memory. There's just about six gigs available of onboard memory right now um, with a couple apps. It's 387 megabytes are used. That's not bad. You scroll all the way down here, you have some interesting information. You have the, uh, the time since last full charge, um, the standby time, um, and the power reserve. So this, if, if it's in power reserve mode, it can last for, I guess, more than two days. Not a huge amount of information, but a little bit of details to go on, um, you know, based on the app there. There's, there's, there's so much stuff going on with this watch, but at the same time, I can't help but feel that what this really is, is the beginning of a wonderful platform. And what I mean by that is it does a lot of things well, but there's so many more things that, that you realize it can do. And there's so many opportunities that, that app developers, for example, aren't taking. So looking at the app store, there's some, these are, this is where you, you navigate the apps actually um, in the watch. You can see here, you move it around. It's really wonderful to, to use the, the interface here. I, I gotta say, Apple did an amazing job with the user interface on the Apple Watch. It is, it is responsive, it's intuitive, it makes sense. There are, there, there's things to learn. Like you have to learn um, you know, when to make gestures, for example. You have to learn how to, you know, when to double tap, how to use Siri, things like that. Because you have the digital crown, which is a pusher, but also turns. You have this pusher here, 
Each of these can take a double tap. Then you have the screen itself, which you can touch, you can tap, you can do like a long press. So for example, I do a long press here, then I get to the mode where I get to switch um, between the various um, watch styles and things like that. So that's actually a really cool one. Um, this is the, this is this is what they call, I think they call this the the um, astronomical version. And by default, what you have here is the time, the date. You have a picture of Earth, and there's a little dot, and that dot tells you where you are on the Earth, and you can actually click on it. It actually shows you day and night because it shows you it's shaded, and you can move the Earth around to see where it's lit, so you can see where daytime is. In the corners here, you have some really cool functionality where you can, uh, let's get back to that mode. There's probably some button I can push just to go back there. I'm trying to see what it is. I don't know what now means. Now, now there's some app called now. Oh, there we go. So I push here, for example, and you have the planets, which I think is super cool. So you can see um, the solar system. Um, and then you can click here to go to the moon. And then you can see the phases of the moon based upon how much of the moon is lit. So that's the, the astronomical one, which I think is is really really cool and that's fun and and there's only you know there's a couple of watch dials um, you know available in here and there's a screen that says new but there's no new watch dials yet that you can you can get and so obviously it's coming you'll you'll know that there's going to be um, a, additional things that you can download for for watch faces I mean let, let's 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 just let's just face it watch dials are going to be a huge part of this experience. Um, Apple's going to make a lot of money on selling new watch faces. People are going to want to buy them. They're going to be fun. That's going to be a big part of the experience, but not right off the bat. This is actually the chronograph dial here. Um, I think it's running. I can stop it, start it again, reset. Oh, I'm spl split timing it. Wow. Cool. Uh, and I'm getting another email. Um, that way that it pops up like that, and another email. Um, that way it pops up is not something that needs to be that way. You can have it a little bit different. And if you see sometimes a little red dot at the top here that is actually um, says you have a notification. So I can pull down here, you see, and I can scroll through some of these notifications and things like that. I can scroll up to get these additional cards. And these are very useful. You have map and weather. And this is all customizable. So let me tell you some of the things that um, Oh, here's you can put an airplane mode and, and stuff like that. Some of the things that I think I'm looking forward to and why I said that this is a great platform that still has stuff to be built on. So you can read incoming text messages. You can look a little bit of your text message log. You can respond to text messages. But when it comes to things like emails, um, at least from my discovery, I could not determine how to read complete emails or how to respond to them. You can archive emails. You can't delete them. You can do something called dismiss. Um, but that doesn't consider them read. So I would really have liked the ability to go through emails um, in the watch a little bit more. So I'm trying to find how to get to that, to the email setting here. So for example here, here's just one from Google, a Google Plus um, message, right? And so I get part of the message here, and what you can tell is if I click on it, I can only read a couple of lines. So usually that's not enough to know what it is. And then I have the option to archive it, or to dismiss it. So archive it, I guess it, I, I guess that archives it in my inbox. Dismiss it just, I think, just dismisses um, the notification. Um, and then I have more things like that. So I would have liked to be able to have that full um, sort of bilateral communication with the phone when it comes to emails. Um, again, things like text messages and calls. You can accept a call right here. You can make a call on the phone. And I've, I've had conversations on the watch where I'm talking to someone and it sounds fine. And Apple has something called handoff, which for various purposes, you can send something um, back to the phone or to the watch. For example, if I take a call on the watch, I can then send it to my phone and continue the conversation seamlessly on the phone, which is something I do a lot. And that works out really, really well. Um, in terms of the screen sort of turning on and things like that, it's, it's pretty good. I'd say that most of the time when you want to do it, you see the screen. Also in certain instances, you can touch the screen, it'll go on. Of course, it's, it's, it's based upon a, a, a certain predictive algorithm of, is that motion you wanting to look at it? Sometimes you just do a little twitch, it doesn't want to have a lot of false pause or, or, or uh, false um, 
yeah, false positives where it thinks that you are wanting to look at the time, but you're not, and therefore it doesn't want to waste battery. So it does it does pretty well. Of course, it's not like a traditional watch where you can just glance at it really quick and see the time, but usually it's it's pretty good. Um, and I like I like the different watch faces. I'm super excited about having more watch faces. I did a video on watch face customization, um, which which I'll, I, you can reference that, but basically you go here and then you use the crown um, to change. So here I'm changing the chronograph dial. There's all these different versions of the chronograph dial and you basically choose the one you want, which I think is cool. It's, it's, it's definitely a, a, neat, a neat part of the uh, experience. Um, this is also a cool dial where it's called the sun version and you see a, a, a sort of um, scale there and that is the p path of, the, of light. So here it's, it's actually midnight you can see it's at the very bottom, and this is the, the this is the dark time, and then it would move back up here um, when it's light. Um, not all the not all of the uh, faces are customizable, so this particular face has no customization. This one does has customization, so it really depends. Um, and some have more or less customization. Things like Simple, for example, probably have a lot of customization because you have all these little modules. So there's actually sometimes up to like six or maybe even seven little modules, which I, I call them that. They're little customizable zones here. So for example, here, this one's off. I can have it the date or nothing. Um, this one, for example, you have a lot more options. You can do all kinds of stuff. So, you know, Apple's designed um, certain types of functionality in there. That, that So there's a lot of customization. Of course, they limit certain things, but I think at the end of the day, um, the, the way they're limiting is probably correct. In terms of being able to access some of the core features of the watch, like if, for example, I had this idea of a face randomizer, so something that every single time you looked at the dial, a different face would come up, um, which I assume would be cool once you've downloaded 20 or 30 faces and you want to enjoy them all, it'd be great to have a randomizer. I don't think Apple has allowed developer access to these sort of core features um, of the Apple Watch. And that's something that will, I think will come in the future. So for example, some of these software issues I'm having, like not being able to read complete emails, I think that's the type of thing that over time will probably go away because someone will develop um, you know, an app to basically go around it or Apple will of course issue an update. So all these things are very easily fixed and things I think that they anticipate. They just sort of want to get somewhere off the start. And of course there's probably other issues. Battery life might be an issue, um, performance. So you have to sort of understand that this is a very difficult product to make. Um, Apple has done a lot better than others, but you're still talking about a really little device. This is a really small computer and it has to do a lot of things and I think it does those things pretty well. But there's also a lot of room to get better. Um, a lot of people have said, okay, now that I have um, the, the Apple Watch, what do I do with it? Is it just a fun toy? That's an interesting, interesting question and something that I've thought about um, a lot. Okay, so what I was trying to say with the watch being a great platform is that I think that with the technology, the sensors, the screen, the apps, the functionality, there's so much that can be done with this thing. Right off the bat, some of those things are done, but a lot more things can be done, and they will be done in not only version 2 of the Apple Watch, but of course in all kinds of updates to the software and third-party apps that are going to come out. So if you get the Apple Watch now, you're getting a great experience, but I think you're definitely going to see it evolving a lot. You know, Apple said that there were something like 3,000 apps um, initially available um, for the Apple Watch, you know, at launch. And that's a lot, but most of those are based around like timing, like calendar functions, like some news, a couple games. I have yet to see in the App Store like any super cool, really interesting um, types of apps that really explore the functionality of the watch, that do some cool things, that are able to tweak the performance of the watch itself. Of course, Apple is, is known for not really allowing people to have a lot of ability to mess with the, uh, the operating system, and, this, and, and the watch is actually pretty customizable as it is, um, but it is the type of thing where I, I, you, you're, I'm eager. I'm eager to see more. I'm eager to see exactly where people go with it, how they develop things, and to understand just all the places that 
um, they'll be able to innovate in terms of making this better and allowing people to tweak it for themselves. Like maybe somebody wants that face randomizer, maybe some people don't, and I'm looking forward um, for, for stuff like that to exist. Um, I'm, I'm almost rambling at this point. There's just so much to say about this. I'm gonna show you how to change bracelets here. Um, so again, this is the steel um, bracelet, and there's a little button there that you push, which is super, super easy. And so you push that button, which makes it easy to take these parts out. So this is actually, if, you, if, you, if you're just changing it for the first time, it's gonna be a little bit, um, it's gonna be a little bit odd, but if you do it a few times, it becomes easy. So I'm gonna put on here um, the, uh, this leather strap, which is great, the loop. So you put the, again, it's also, I, I believe it's, it's the type of thing where you can put it either way. Oh, I guess you can't. You're gonna wanna put the right way. Gotta match it up there, I guess. So it, it slides in there, it, and it has you hear a little sound, it'll lock. I actually like this strap a lot. There we go, so there it is, and then you loop it around. Now this strap is interesting because at first I was skeptical of this strap. I was like, this strap is gonna fall off. So it's actually a little bit, there we go. So this uses magnets, and you can feel there's a bunch of magnets. And so what I was concerned about is that because there's no actual attachment, it could fall up. I'm putting my finger under there and I'm pulling, I'm pulling pretty hard and it's, it, it's staying snug. And so that's, that's really great. See how that just totally looks different on a different strap. Um, it's definitely a lot lighter on something like this. Even though this is not the heaviest steel in the world, it's still metal. This may not have as formal or as mask, you know, sort of like a macho look to it as this very futuristic um, bracelet, which literally, I mean, this looks like something out of the future. Look at this. That, cl that deploying clasp is like pretty much not at all thicker than the bracelet yet it, it hides this functionality. And even the watch industry itself, the traditional watch industry, has never come up with something that is that slick. That is really, really cool. And the ability to change this, the, the links on this bracelet and resize without tools, I mean, that's fantastic. That is just fantastic. It works so well, it's so smooth, it's so comfortable. I mean, I'm running my finger here. There's no like horrible sharp edges. Um, they just did a good job. And then you have, you know, like these straps. There's various leather straps. This is, again, the one with, with the, the magnets in it. Um, it just, it looks good and it feels super comfortable. Of course, there's the sport bands. There's just a lot of different options. Um, and there you go. You can just take it off like that. It works. It just, it's nice. The, the Apple Watch is the version um, in steel that has a sapphire crystal and the ceramic on the back. I don't really know how durable it's going to be in the long term. And I don't know how durable it is compared to the Apple Watch Sport, which is the aluminum version that has different materials that um, is less expensive, um, but of course um, has materials that, that are, it's lighter watch, but it's a little bit more fragile in its construction. So it's really gonna take sort of a, a longer time. Um, I've been sort of talking about this for a long time now, so I'm gonna try to wrap up I'm happy with this product. I think it's super cool. I'm excited to play with it. And the things it does well, it does really well. It doesn't do everything. And I didn't expect Apple to do everything right out of the bag. There's definitely a lot of room for Apple to grow. It doesn't do anything poorly at this point. So in the sense that all the functionality that I've tried, it does well. So it's, so it's not like certain things are just sort of broken. Again, I haven't done everything, but the, the core functionality is all done very well. There are limitations, however. Like I said, there are things that the watch just right now doesn't do. And those are, are, are known things. It, it, you know, Apple knows there's certain things that the watch doesn't do yet. For example, like being able to read your email. And that's, that's okay. Um, I think that that's something which is, which is fine. I just have a feeling that those are gonna come a little bit later. And it just, if scrolling here through the, through the crown, just works so well. Like people are like, does it pinch? And you know, I'm like, it doesn't pinch, but you don't need to pinch and grab it. You can just go like this to scroll and to, to, to zoom in and things like that. It works really well. So um, Apple Watch definitely gets thumbs up. Um, it's not for everyone in the sense that not everyone needs this right now. This isn't a product that you're gonna be like, oh man, I, I, I can't live without this. Is this gonna be convenient? Is this gonna be something that is useful? Absolutely. I don't think this is just a toy. I don't think this is just a cool thing for extra notifications. I think this is very useful and, and getting things like notifications and seeing the time and getting all this cool stuff right on your wrist seems natural. 
And I think that's why Apple really did this because having a smartwatch just seems natural. And I think that as the smartwatch category evolves, there's gonna be more and more opportunities for companies to differentiate themselves and sort of discover better ways of doing things. But at the end of the day, this feels natural. And I think that's why consumers have been so forgiving for some of the early products that came out in the smartwatch category that haven't been that great. Um, but consumers have been really, really forgiving and been buying stuff, maybe not using, but definitely buying and experimenting. Um, I don't think that the Apple Watch is the type of thing that people are going to abandon. I think that's a great item. Um, and I'm looking forward to wearing it more and, and, and checking it out. So again, you can read um, more about uh, the Apple Watch on a blog to watch. And uh, we'll talk to you next time. Thanks.